Every day you wake up, whether you're trying to or not, you are showing the world your brand. What is the brand of you? When people hear your name, do they think, oh, don't fool with him. Don't fool with her because I ain't going to do nothing but lie and cheat to you. Or when they hear your name, they're like, yeah, that's good people. She good people. He good people. You got to have integrity. Integrity is doing the right thing. Even when nobody is looking, it's crazy because, I, hey, I had to learn about integrity the hard, the hard way. Way back when it was little bitty, sixth grade, 12-year-old Freddie Fry. i never forget. My dad came home with a BB gun. I was like, ooh, Dad, Daddy, is, is, is that BB gun for me? He said, son, I got you a BB gun. Now I want you to be responsible with this BB gun. You know, we got this big field in the backyard. You can go out there and shoot and do whatever you want to do. Get your outdoorsmen on. <laughs> I ain't heard nothing he said. I was just excited and elated to have a BB gun. So what I do? I was 12 years old. You know what I did. I got on the phone, called my best friend Squidge. I was like, Squidge, got me a BB gun. I bet you $5 I can shoot it better than you. He said, you can't shoot that BB gun better than me. I said, I bet you I can. Come on, the house right now. We're going to make a bet. And whoever make that can can shoot it and make it flip the most times, they're going to win that $5. Bet is on. He came over to my house immediately. And we started to think, where can we shoot a can? Where can we shoot a can? And I just happened to look in my front yard. Ooh. There was this perfect tree stump sitting in the middle of the front yard. Now, my dad told me to shoot in the backyard and be responsible. But that tree, it was calling our name. I was like, man, you know, we marksmen, so it ain't going to be, we ain't going to hit nothing but the, the can anyway. So, man, I set that can on that tree stump. I was like, yeah, 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 boy. I'm about to take your $5 right now. He said, you're not going to take my 5 I said, you go first. So my friend got down on the ground looking at that, looking at that can. He aimed, pulled the trigger, poof, ping, can flipped about three times. We got, oh, you shot the can, you shot the can. We were super excited. I said, but you know what? You made it flip three times. I'm about to make it flip at least four times, and I'm going to take that money straight cash, homie. So I got down on the ground. It was my turn, right? I was looking at it. I was eyeing it. I was eagle eye focused, and I pulled the trigger. And I expected to hear, ping. That's not the sound I heard, y'all. I heard crash because I hadn't paid any attention. On the other side of the, of the tree stump was a fence. On the other side of the fence was my daddy's brand new hot rod car, which I had not even seen, I promise you. But I just shot his car window out. I hopped up, oh my God, oh my God, I, my daddy gonna kill me, he gonna kill me, he gonna kill me. My friend was like, calm down, calm down, calm down. I said, oh, I gotta think, I gotta think, I gotta think. Now I'm up in there in panic mode. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I had an unbrilliant idea. And some of you guys out there, you wake up and you have a gang of unbrilliant ideas. And they lead you into bad places because you didn't take the time to think them through. You just want to get out of a situation that you have messed up. We got to remove those unbrilliant ideas from our life. Because they're what lead us down a bad path. They lead us into darkness and we're trying to get to that light. So I had an unbrilliant idea and I told my friend, I was like, okay, okay, here's what we're going to do. Bro, grab the basketball. I'm going to run to my house and grab the basketball and we're going to head down to Berry Park. And we're going to get, we're going to, hey, we're going to get our hoop on, come back about 30 minutes, an hour later, act like we had no idea what happened. I said, man, you sure you want to do it? Man, hey, that's what I want to do. Now, if I had integrity, y'all know I would have went and told my dad what had happened. But I was only 12 years old, so don't judge me. So that's what we did. We went down to Berry Park, came back an hour later, holding the basketball, jogging up. What do I see? Pops inspecting his car. He looking around. He sees me, he's like, boy, you know what happened to my car window? I was like, no, son, dad, I've been there. Me and Miss Queen, we've been, we've been up at, at, the, at Berry Park getting our hope on. You know, we trying to get to the league. No, I don't know what happened to your car window. He asked me, he said, you know what happened to my car window? I said, no, sir. He said, I'm going to find out what happened to my car window. We went on in the house. And I was like, oh, dude, we dodged one. Sometimes in life you think you dodged the bullet. But what happens in the dark, what's done in the dark, it always finds its way to the light. 
I didn't understand it at 12, but you should understand that at 22. You should understand it at 26. You should understand it at 30, 45, 50. You should understand the things that you're doing in the dark are going to come to light. It's just a natural progress, the way the universe works. And it's going to come to light when you least expect it. And so I'm coming home from school a few days later, excited, just got out of basketball practice. My stepmom greets me at the door. Little Fred, come here. It's like, yeah, what's going on? I was talking to the lady next door, Miss Pearl, and she asked me about you. I said, she asked you about what you mean? What she asked you about me for? She said, is everything all right with little Fred? I said, why would you ask if everything's all right with little Fred? Well, I saw him and his friend out there shooting that BB gun, and I saw they shot Big Fred's car window out, so I know he had to tear them up. I was like, oh, we in the hood, and she snitched on me, y'all. She don't know the rules. She snitched on me. I'm like, oh. My stepmom was like, well, did you shoot his car window out? I was like, yeah, I did. I said, well, you got to go tell him because I ain't going to tell him. I said, but he going to kill me. And she was like, I know. Y'all can see why I couldn't stand her, right? So I go in the house, head to my daddy's room, long walk down the hall, get to his door, boom, 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 boom. Who is it? It's little Fred. Can I, can I come in for a second, Daddy? I come in. Like, like, Daddy, you know how I, I said that I didn't know nothing, what had happened to your car window? He's like, yeah, you know what happened to my car window, boy? I said, yeah. So what happened to my car window, boy? He said, you know how you again? I said, you know how you again me that BB gun? I said, yeah. So me and my friend was playing shoot the can in, in the front yard. And, and when he shot the can, the can went ping. But when I shot the can, I, I must have had like a, a lazy eye or something. Because when I shot it, I shot your car window out. He said, you shot my car window out? Go to your room, boy. I was like, oh my God. His room was right next door to mine, but it felt like it took me forever to get there. I go in there and close the door. I'm just in there patiently waiting, scared to death, right? It seemed like it took him forever to come in. He comes in the door, but he's not by himself. He brought a friend, got a belt over his shoulder. I'm like, oh! He sits down, he says, son, if you just would have told me the truth when this first happened, your punishment would be a lot less severe than it's about to be. I'm like, oh, I never forgot that day. I don't know if it was the belt. I don't know if it was a sign of the car window, but whenever I'm in a situation where I'm faced with having integrity and making the right decision, whether I'm by myself or whether people are around, I always remember that, remember that story. And I always choose to do the right thing. I'm trying to tell each and every one of you out there, it's imperative that you have integrity. People have to believe in you. People have to know that when you say you're going to do something, it's going to get done. You have to keep your credit right. Integrity will take you to places that you never thought you could go just because somebody knows that if you call, if I call you or if they call you and you say you're going to do something, they're going to be able to trust that you're going to get it done. You've got to have integrity.